Welcome to Marriage and Money, a conversational podcast about personal financial topics aimed at improving your conversations about money and marriage so that you can reach your dreams together. This is a weekly discussion brought to you by a seemingly financially incompatible couple bonded by the legal contract of marriage. My name is David, your favorite saver, and I'm joined today by my favorite scholar, Heather. Heather, a- great to see you again today. A plus to that. <laughs> Heather, could you remind everybody where how they could get a hold of us if they want to send us a question or a comment? Yes, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love your questions, your comments. You can email us at marriageandmoneypodcast at gmail.com or message us on Instagram at marriage.and.money. Also, please do rate and review us on iTunes. You don't have to use iTunes. I don't use iTunes. But if you can go out there and rate and review us, it really would help us to reach more people. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, we have a great show planned today. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to pay for college. That's a big one. Everybody yeah, loves pay college. For that. I, well, eventually, <laughs> if you don't pay for it now, you got to pay for it later, like most things in life, right? I feel like there's other better parts about college to talk about than paying for it. You mean like the parties? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. what are you talking about? Well, boys? back then. Wait, back what then. boys are we talking about? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. I need to keep an eye on you. So Heather, what's been going on lately with you? So we've had a lot of video chats with family lately, which has been fun. I don't know why. It seems like this week we had a few more. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's getting around the holiday season and things. So that's been really fun. And we were talking to my, my, my sister's family and my niece is is getting, she just got home from college. She just finished her first semester of college. It's hard to believe, isn't it? That I she's know. already done with her first semester? She's so grown up. Um, so that's pretty fun. Do you remember, David, do you remember your first time going back home after being in college? You probably- Well, didn't. so I was a little different because um, I, I lived at home. So um, my mom wasn't, my mom and my dad weren't able to support me in, financially like they wanted to sending me to school but my mom did let me live with her for the first three years of college and so i lived at home and that was probably her choice she probably didn't want you to leave (laughs) honestly (laughs) i think you thought she was doing you a favor but i think you were doing her well yeah i don't know she she liked (laughs) having me around i'll give you that but but it was it was financially a huge help to me um, it, it helped me get through school without loans. Well, I remember, I remember that first, um, my first summer home after being at college for a year. And I tell you, I had outgrown my welcome at home. Really? My, you were not wanted there, <laughs> Me huh? on my own did not jive with my parents anymore. Um, but they wanted, you know, these things called curfews and, it, it you sounds know, more not like sleeping, getting up before noon. Like these things that like I was making decisions <laughs> on my own and, and we, we weren't really aligned on kind of what life should look it, like. It sounds more like you didn't align with what with their expectations more than uh, or the, they didn't align align with you well why not i don't see why it's not that way so um i'm kind of curious to hear how it goes um i'm sure she's, it's gonna be fine i'm sure everybody's gonna be excited for her to be home and it's gonna go beautifully a lot better than my experience but um we will see that will certainly be a good story to tell when if we are able to get this the, both sides of that oh awesome so this week we're talking about pain for college so Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, I don't know if you can license that music. So I think, it's okay I think for me to. I sing think if it. you cover it yourself, you're, I think it's you're, okay. you're on the clear on that one. Right. Yeah. Well, and you don't get to hear those um, th- that music until after you've completed college, anyway, right? right? So by then, it's like, oh gosh. Hopefully, you've either paid for it at that point, or you've got some kind of plan. Right. I don't know. So we're hoping we're talking to people before they hear that music, ideally. Um, but uh, we understand college is expensive, right? I mean, it's one of the most expensive things you pay for in your life. Ooh, you are not joking. It's more than a car. It's crazy. Less than a house, sometimes. <laughs> so I was looking up statistics, and this is from a ver- uh, a study that said for 2018 to 2019, the average fees for this is United States universities. So a public two-year college 
for tuition and room and board is just over 12 grand a year. That that's a lot of money for a two year college. Then you go up to a four year public college. This is in state. If you're in state, yeah, is just over twenty one thousand for one year. Yeah, one year. That's ridiculous. So then, so that's over eighty grand. Right. For then a you go degree. to the four, the same public four year college, but you're out of state. So you get dinged. They, apparently, they don't want people coming in, which is kind of weird because you think like some states would be like, hey. We could probably use some some different people. California but. could probably use that right now. They're losing a bunch <laughs> right? of people. Which is probably why they charge it. But so out of state is just over thirty seven thousand dollars for one year. Wow, that ha- you got to really want to go to that school if you're spending that kind of you a want premium. to. And then we're not done. We're not done. That is not even the top of this iceberg. The top is for private. Nonprofit for your colleges is just over forty eight thousand dollars for one year. That's Ooh. a ton of money. It, it feels like you're trying to sell me on the fact that college is expensive. Like you, you don't just think wanna, it, you didn't think I knew. I just wanted to prove it. I feel like that. <laughs> I don't care how much money you make. I feel like it, that, it's a lot of money. Expensive. It's a lot of money, no matter how much money you make. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that's a ton of money. And in addition to that, um, I was recently reading that student loans. Everybody has seems to have student loans these days. So there's like 1.6 trillion dollars of student loans that are outstanding. Did you say currently. trillion? Trillion with a T. Yeah, and across 45 million borrowers. So it, it works out to being an average somewhere around I don't know 32,000 or so um, per person for each loan. So it, it's a lot of money. It's a ton of money. I mean, I can see why people take out debt because. It's a, it's a lot of money for, it, to come up with to pay for well, it. Well, especially to come up with that much money when you're 18 years old going True. into college, right? Yeah. So when you're 18 years old, a, a lot of people, you know, you said a college at a four-year degree in state would be 80 grand. A lot of people, most people don't make that much money coming out of school, right? right? And so how do you expect to pay that um, when you're coming out of high school? Okay, That's this the is, challenge. This is going to make me sound old, but, and I know we're old, but. Gosh, I just don't remember it being that expensive back in our day. I mean, I know it was cheaper, but it was still expensive. But it, it was these expensive. Prices are- yeah, I think if I remember correctly, I went to a state school um, in and state, in state, and I think my whole education was right around ten thousand dollars. And this was four years living at home, no board. This was just tuition. Um, I think it was around somewhere between ten to twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. So a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. And and so because this is so much money, most people that are taking right around or close to 20 years to pay off their college debt. So what that means is, is that if you are graduating at 22, then you could still be paying for college in your 40s. Your oh kids goodness. could theoretically be going to college at the, at the time when you're paying off your last payment on your college. That is depressing to think about. I mean, can you imagine 20 years of that monkey on your back? You start off in a worse spot than you were before you went to school. I mean, that's a big mountain to overcome starting out when you're just starting out your new right. career and your life as an adult and then to have that. Right. That's you, a that's a lot of more years of eating ramen. At, well, eating ramen hey, until you're in your 40s. Hey, there is nothing wrong with eating ramen. In fact, <laughs> I had some ramen today for the record. <laughs> I have not given up the ramen and don't try to make me. Ramen, it's good stuff. <laughs> but no, you're right. It's a lot of years to be doing that. And, uh, and, and this is all before you even think about taking on a mortgage or taking on an auto loan or taking on any of these other, this, these other components of debt. Um, you don't have credit card debt at that point, right? You're starting out with a clean slate, and now all of a sudden you're saddled with all this debt. It's a problem. Oh, anyway, okay. <laughs> I think I think we've established, and I think most people would agree, college debt, it's hard. It's expensive. It's a problem. It's a problem. So, what? How, how do we? How do we get after this? What do we? What do we do about this? Well, I think I think first of all. The question you need to ask is, do you need to go to college? I think this is one of the biggest misunderstandings of my generation. I feel like we've heard or I've heard and you still hear that you must go to college. You have to get a college degree. It doesn't even matter what the college degree is and you have to get a college degree or you are going to fail at life. 
And I, I want, think we need to change that narrative. There are a lot of other options than having to go to a four-year school. Also, um, I used to think that a gap year was a horrible idea. I thought, oh, that's for slackers or partiers. But actually, if you, if you don't know what you want to do yet, you should wait. The most expensive mistake you could do is to start school and be paying for it and not have any and, and, and not even know if that's where you want to do or you want to go. It's okay. I mean, you could even travel the world for probably less money than it would take to pay for a year of college that is you're not going to use. That's a really excellent point. And I think I think th- terms like gap year or or the whole discussion around do I go to college or not? I think those things um, have gotten a bad rap because it's it, it oftentimes becomes the default answer of people that might be uh, might be slackers, right? So people who aren't slackers who are being intentional about oh, I'm not going to college for these reasons, these very good reasons, or I'm not going I'm going to take a gap year for these very specific good reasons, like to build up money to pay for college. That's a very different scenario. That's not, hey, I'm being a slacker and I'm just hanging out and partying with my friends. That's, I have a plan for my life and I'm executing that plan for my life. And I think that's the the key difference here. Right, I mean, it really amazes me as I look back on my life that at 18 years old, I knew I wanted to be an accountant. I still love being an accountant today, but I recognize that that is not normal and I am not normal. Then again, I mean, who wouldn't want to be in the most fascinating, exciting profession <laughs> of accounting? It just, I mean, it just sounds stimulating. Oh, all, all those 10 keys that you get to, to punch numbers Excel into. Excel spreadsheets. Excel spreadsheets. It's, it's, what, I mean, what is there not to just I, love I about know. that? Oh know. my gosh, no. But, but seriously, like, you don't you don't ha- people don't have to go to college there are plenty of opportunities in in different trades there's different professions um you you look at a lot of successful people millionaires and billionaires that have never gone to school but they have this drive they have plan they have purpose they have vision and they're able to execute on it and so you can be you you can be anything you want to be without that college piece uh, if you have the right motivation and drive. Right, and I, I mean, I think the trades are a very overlooked area and people aren't going into them, but I remember when I was working at a plant, the, some of the highest paid people were the control techs or the electricians, and that, I mean, it, it still requires some schooling, a two-year school or whatever, a program, some apprenticeships, but it's not gonna break the bank, and normally you can work while you're, or pe- work while you're going to school, and you can make, really great money so at the same time i would say i think the easy path is to go to college and do the standard thing because we have a system built up in the u.s that facilitates that system true so well it's not what we're saying essentially here is or at least what i'm saying is well i don't think it's a necessity to go to college I do think it's the easy path if, you, if you're if you like you, Heather, and you have, I want to be an accountant, or you're like me and I want to be an IT, like, that gives you the easy path. You certainly don't need an IT degree to be an IT, as there are plenty of people that have proven that, but it's a much easier path to get into the industry that way. Yeah, that's usually, I usually take the easy road. <laughs> <laughs> so if people decide they do want to go to school, then they're just toast? Yeah, no. What if they decide to go to school? No. So first of all, you listed out a number of different ways that they could go to school, right? You said you said there were community colleges that you can do do at a certain price bracket. You can do in-state schools at a certain price bracket, out out of state and private schools at and so I, I think when when you're deciding where do I go to school, you need to look at what, what kind of a budget do I have to work with? how can I make this happen at a way that's going to be economically feasible to me? Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at schools, first of all, you should really look at what are the colors and whether you're gonna look good in that college sweatshirt or t-shirt oh boy. in that color oh palette. Because some of them are just really nasty. Also, I, another key statistic to look at is the male to female ratio, very important. So again, I might be a bad person to to look at these factors by one because I never purchased a college (laughs) shirt or sweater or or logoed item while I was in school. And second, 
I didn't even have a date while I was in <laughs> college. I didn't. I. I mean, I. I'd like to think of myself as a late bloomer. I. <laughs> so. So both of those, I really didn't have any interaction with. No, in, in all seriousness, though, you really do. Where you go to school is going to have the biggest impact on how much this this price tag is. And you don't have to go to an Ivy League or a fancy or whatever type of school to be successful and to get the degree you want and to have a great job. So if you can afford it and you can pay cash, you're not going to go into debt, then by all means, go ahead. But really, the, this is probably the biggest impact is deciding on what school can you afford, should you afford. And make sure there's a return on investment on that degree. So don't don't go for uh, don't go for a degree that you don't think you're going to be able to use or, or capitalize on or don't go for a degree you're not you don't think you're going to be able to follow through on if you were to spend all this money on a medical degree and then don't become don't don't become a, a nurse or a doctor well that's going to be a problem right yeah. And I think one of the one it, it's not either all or nothing I mean there's a hybrid method of getting your two year, your gen eds out of the way at the community college paying a tenth of the price of university and then finishing up and your degree is still going to say that you went to that university whether you spent all four years there or just two years that's where you're getting your degree so there are options to to really look at getting what you want at, at an affordable price okay so you've decided now where you want to go what you're going to be majoring in what you're going to do how do you pay for that um i, I know we, we've we've talked a little bit about okay we, well you could take a gap year work work it off um, build up some some cash I think that's a great option there's there's other ways to get cash too you can I mean I I worked um, while I was in school so I had a but, job on campus I had summer jobs but working gets in the way of you know all the partying and going to clubs and things you know well all that the could be why you were the one that had dates in college <laughs> and I was the one that didn't I'm just kidding no you're absolutely right there's plenty of on-campus jobs also work during your school breaks you get you know a month off at Christmas you get the summer if you're not I mean you can work a ton and save up there's also a good balance in working while you're studying for sure yeah yeah and, and some some companies, I know certainly in medicine, um, there'll be commitments that you can make where you say, okay, I'll work in this this remote location that nobody wants to go to for four years or whatever if you pay for my school. And so there are options to do that as well if, if you have to. I, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of signing up for commitments like that. As we've experienced, that doesn't always pay out. <laughs> In other options, <laughs> there are scholarships. There's a ton out there. Apply, apply, apply. Your part-time job while you were a senior is to apply for scholarships. The Rotary, the Kiwanis, the Elks, all the clubs. All the clubs are giving out them scholarships. <laughs> so really make this a job. Apply for There's no limit on how many scholarships you can apply for. Even if you get 10% of them back, that's going to be It's huge. a lot of work, but yeah, certainly worth it if you can... Uh, make a haul like you're talking about there and then and then certainly if your mom and dad have money if they've been saving that of course is a great way to go as well get if they're, if they're willing to give you money I don't know I wouldn't be afraid to take their money right I mean this is I was very fortunate that my parents were willing to pay for my schooling but not obvious obviously not everybody gets this option nor should you expect it as a kid but when the parents can help, obviously, that is a huge benefit as we're looking at these price tags. But my guess is that most of the people listening here are not in high school. They're probably people that... You don't, have, think, you don't think our audience is... With, we're talking about marriage? I mean, we're hip. Not really. We're hip, but, but probably not a lot of married <laughs> high schoolers are listening to us right now. I'm guessing a lot of people that are listening to us have probably either already been to college or have decided it's not for them and have moved on. But whatever the case, they're probably past that college point. So, what do we do if if they've already if they're sitting on student loan debt right now? So, pay it off. Make this. Part, oh, it's just that easy. Yeah, just pay it off. Get rid of it. Make it part of your debt plan. Uh, go back and listen to see episode seven. Uh, debt is bad of our podcast. <laughs> um, this is this, there's no such thing as good debt. This is not good debt. So, put it part of your plan. Build it into your budget and your your financial plan as you're trying to get out of debt. Work it off. Definitely pay more than the minimum payments on it. 
you don't want to be one of those people that's paying this off while your kids are in college. That is bad. Um, and so if you have debt like this, I mean, you if you still have this outstanding, you you're you should be living like a college student still, essentially. You've got to knock this out, make those sacrifices, live cheap and hammer this out, get rid of it. Um, and then once you have this done, once you have this done and you're saving for your retirement and you are on your way to, to living the best life that you can, start thinking about your kids' college if you have kids. Yeah, so first we really want you to get out of debt before you start saving for college. And also you should really start saving for your retirement. We actually just saw this advertisement on the MRT this week for a bank and it had a had a statement that said 60% of women will save for their child's education before their own retirement. Uh, really? Like, again, you have to take care of yourself first. Just like when you're on an airplane, you put the you put the breathing mask over your own face before you go to put it over your kid's face. So we're not saying you can't do those at the same time, but you shouldn't sacrifice your retirement savings to be saving for their college. Right, because you don't necessarily know is your kid going to be there to take care of your retirement. A lot, some parents may think that yes, that's going to happen, but maybe not. Maybe you need to be the one to take care of yourself. So uh, be sure that you're taking care of your own retirement before you start taking care of your kid's college. They have more time to save for college than you do for retirement, most likely. So, but once you're taking care of your retirement, or I think you can save for your kid's college. Um, but it's kind of a challenge on how much do you save? When do you start saving? Well, ideally you would start saving right away. Once, as soon as your kid is born, start putting money away for college. I did some, some quick math on this and I was figuring out that if you save 150 bucks a month or about $5 a day for 18 years at 5% interest, you're going to have 50 grand by the time they turn 18 for college. Now, those numbers you gave me, Heather, that 50 grand doesn't cover all those options. But it is a great start, and you pair that with scholarships, you pair that with a part-time job, and they're there, debt-free. Yeah, that's a really great option. And I think, again, it's it's more about get starting that habit of putting something away. Just start. Just start putting it away, putting it in an account. Um, that's That's the important thing here. You've got time to add to it and increase it. And, there are, and and you can do this you can do this in the form of uh, like a 529 plan so there are tax free options uh, and we don't have all the details here and we're not we're not going to get into it right now but um, look into the 529 uh, tax advantage plan in order to be able to uh, put money away for your kids college tax free Okay. Well, hopefully that helped um, cover a few items. I know this is a big topic and I'm sure we'll talk more about it in future episodes, but we want you to continue the conversation at home. So sit down and talk to your spouse. Uh, talk about what your current student loan debt, hopefully you're aware if you've had it and you've had that conversation. Put together a plan on when you will have it paid off. Uh, also, if you have kids or plan to have kids, discuss how you want to fund their college. And also start the conversation with your kids now. Let them be part of the conversation and the solution and help them be aware of what that price tag and what that's going to take for them in their future. For I really like that component of bringing them into it because this is something that it's about them and they need to be engaged in that conversation and understand how critical this is and how big of a deal college is and if how expensive it is. Right. And how the, the, it's, they need to take ownership of it. Because if, if you just hand them a check, like I was saying, 50 grand, if you hand them a $50,000 check and they don't understand what went into making that happen, it, they may not take it as seriously as you do. Plus, like we said, the decision on where you go is a big component. And so they should know all the factors instead of just have a dream, this is where I want to go, understand all the different pieces, what it's going to cost and yeah. how, where that money is going to come from. Yeah. So I really, like, I really like that. I think it's going to be a great discussion for everybody at home. Okay. Well, thankfully, uh, we are through with our college. We've paid for our college, but, so we don't really have to talk about this. But um, on this topic, David, 
What would you have done differently knowing what you know now about your college journey, such as like selection of school, paying for it, whatever? So yeah, I didn't, I didn't talk a lot about my college background, but um, I, I mentioned I lived at home and I had part-time jobs, uh, plural. I, I had at different times, of the, I had a summer job and then I had a during the school year job and I had an internship towards the end. And all of that money went to making sure I was graduating without any debt. And then of course, um, yeah, the support of my, of my mom living, living at her place. But if I were to do things differently, um, right up front, what I would have done is I would have done a more extensive school search. At the time, I really didn't know. This was 1998. I didn't really, the, the internet was still pretty new to me. I'd had the internet for a year at that point. I really didn't know how to do a, a school search. I didn't have a good guidance counselor at my high school. I had no idea what, what the process was. I didn't do a single school visit. I didn't, I, I saw some flyers, but that was about it. So I probably would have done a better better school search just to understand what my options were because I really didn't know what my options were. And then secondly, I would have applied for more scholarships. So in the end, I got about $500 of scholarships, which was awesome. Like 500 bucks was a lot of money, especially when you're talking about a ten dollars to $12,000 uh, tuition. But, but still, um, I didn't know what the processes were, how to find more scholarships. Like, I felt pretty clueless in my my journey for scholarships. So I would have, uh, if I were to do it again, I'd spend a little more time figuring that out. So I would have asked you out on a date during college instead of waiting <laughs> for fate to introduce us five years after. Oh school. boy, that's probably the first thing. Well, that that's a good option right there. I, yeah, I, <laughs> although I might have turned you down because I would have been too busy studying and working. <laughs> trying to pay for college. True, <laughs> the timing was just right there, sorry. Um, honestly, I don't know that I ha would have changed much. So again, I didn't really share mine. I I went to a, an out-of-state school, but it was it was a relatively cheap school, so it wasn't that expensive. Um, and, and my parents were willing to pay for my college and had the money. However, I was able to get 100% scholarships. Uh, my dad's company offered a scholarship. So I was able to fund, fund my college 100% through scholarships. That being said, again, you know, I didn't pick the most expensive school. That's probably why scholarships covered it, but it didn't hold me back. Like I was still able to get a job at one of the big four CPA firms. You know, I, I, I feel like, again, even though I had no idea, back to your point, did I look at all the best options for schools and pick it out? I, probably not the best school but it was great it worked out great and it was affordable and i i didn't leave with that the one thing though that i would have changed maybe is looking back i, I never worked during the school year i would work on my breaks and i was i i think it was just something in high school i didn't work it was oh, i should be focusing on studies extracurriculars like that's where my time is going um but i looking back it probably would have been good to have a job during school. I think you can balance working and um, school and still be successful. And that way it could have been able to support my own expenses instead of relying on my parents for that, the pizza money or gas for the car, just being able to have a little bit of job and ownership in making some money during the school year, as well as like on my breaks, and learning that balance. I think that would have been good. Yeah, it, having some balance, I can see would would, would make a, a difference in just getting better perspective and becoming more well-rounded. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, really good observations there. So, um, I think that about wraps it up for our conversation today. Uh, we would love to continue to hear how your conversations at home are going about money and uh, to take your questions on a future episode. So, please go ahead and email us at marriageandmoneypodcast at gmail.com or message us on Instagram at marriage.and.money. Also, continue to please rate and review us on iTunes as that will help us reach more people. Thanks so much again for joining us this week. And remember that whether you are a spender or a saver, your best financial life lies somewhere in